Hey, what up guys? It's Dan, and we are finally getting around to doing another putter restoration video. In today's video, we're going to be doing a Scotty Cameron Golo 3. As you can see in the pictures, this putter's been beat up pretty bad. I don't know who owned the putter before me. I bought it off of, I think it's Second Swing on eBay um, in this condition, and it's pretty rough. Whoever owned it before me definitely didn't use a head cover, lots of bag chatter, lots of dents and dings all over the putter. But we're going to show even a putter that's in rough condition can be restored. Uh, but the focus of today's video is actually going to be on the grinding process. One of the number one things I got questions about in my previous videos was more information on how I did the grinding, what wheel I was using, um, how much pressure I used, uh, just a general uh, overview of, of grinding because I think a lot of people are concerned that you know they're not going to do it right and they're going to permanently damage their putter, which is a legitimate concern. Grinding can definitely damage your putter permanently if you don't know what you're doing. So let's go ahead and talk in great detail. I'm going to try to do my absolute best to give you close-up video and talk in great detail about how to do the grinding process safely and consistently so that your putter comes out looking great. So the first thing we're going to talk about and focus on is what area of the putter are you actually grinding? I break down this video into three different categories. You have a sharp edge, you have a soft or rounded edge, and then you have flat surfaces. Depending on what surface you're actually going to be grinding on will determine how much pressure you're going to apply, how many passes you're going to need to make, and how much time you're actually going to leave the putter on the wheel. Okay, so the first surface that we're going to talk about grinding is the flat surface. This is going to make up the majority of your grinding because the majority of your putter is made up of flat surfaces. Um, I would say that if you want to think about it in a scale to 1 to 10 when it comes to pressure, the amount of pressure that you can put on the putter while grinding a flat surface, one being no pressure whatsoever, just barely setting the putter against the wheel, and 10 being pushing the putter into the wheel as firmly as you possibly can, you can normally safely apply somewhere between 5 and 7. That would be a safe area of pressure that you can apply, and, and it would vary based on how much damage is on the actual putter and how much material needed to be removed. It's very difficult to remove too much material or damage the putter when grinding a flat surface. Really, the only mistake you can make in this area is leaving the putter on the wheel without moving it for a long period of time. That can cause damage to the actual putter, but if you don't do that, really, you have a lot, very little to worry about in this particular area. And the next area that I want to talk about is soft and rounded edges. When working on soft or rounded edges, you definitely need to apply a little bit more attention to detail. You also need to taper back how much pressure you're applying when actually pushing the putter into the wheel. It, on that same scale of 1 to 10, if on a flat surface 5 or 6 would be safe, then on a softer rounded edge, you're probably going to look at a, a pressure closer to like a 3, maybe a 4. You're also going to need to take a lot less passes and check on your work more often. This is going to make sure that you're not removing more material than you want to and it's going to keep the putter from changing from its original shape. So you never want to take the putter and, and take so much of an edge off that the putter no longer looks like it did originally before you started grinding. The last area we're going to talk about is the most difficult and definitely the most important part when it comes to the grinding process and that's going to be working on a leading or trailing edge or a hard edge. Um, when you're working on a sharp edge or a hard edge, you have to pay a lot of attention to detail. Make one or two passes at a time. Do not leave that edge on the wheel for more than one or two passes at a time because I promise if you do, you are definitely going to regret it. Um, any time that I've ever made a mistake in the grinding process early on, it was from leaving the putter on the wheel too long, applying too much pressure on a, on a, on a firm, sharp, or hard edge. Um, especially on the leading edge, because this is what you're looking down at. If you take too much material off of a leading edge, it's going to make the face look like it has more loft than it actually does because you're going to see more of the face because you've removed that material. It changes how the entire putter looks at a dress and that can throw off everything if you mess that up. So when it comes to how much pressure I apply when I'm doing a leading edge, I, I'm normally somewhere around a one or a two, never ever more than a three, ever. Never more than a three. It is very, very light pressure. I normally do one pass at a time, I check my work, and then I do another pass. Because on a leading edge, on a sharp edge, you're gonna remove material very, very quickly, and you, you probably can let it get 
out of hand if you're not really paying attention to what you're doing. So this is definitely the, the part that you need, takes the most practice, it takes the most attention, and I would highly suggest practicing on a putter that is not your primary putter or on some cheap putter that you can pick up off of eBay before you attempt to start grinding the, the hard edges or the sharp edges of your putter. For the very last part of this grinding tutorial, I'm gonna talk about using the Dremel tool. Um, there are parts of the putter that my grinding wheel can't reach and in order to remove flaws I have to use my Dremel tool. Normally I use a 600 to 800 grit sandpaper, however uh, I was going through my shop and it appears that I am either lost, misplaced, or out of both 600 and 800 grit. So the highest grit sandpaper I had was 450. I would not suggest attempting to do this with less than a 6 or 800 grit sandpaper. I would not suggest trying it with a 450 unless you have a lot of experience with the Dremel tool and you have a very steady hand because this right here will jack your putter up super fast if you don't know what you're doing or if you don't have a steady hand. I want you to listen to the motor of my Dremel tool real quick. I'm going to let it play and I want you to listen to it before it touches the actual putter and then what it sounds like after it's touching the putter and how there's almost no strain on the motor whatsoever, just so that you understand how little contact I am actually making with the putter. So we're gonna play that real quick. I'm gonna replay this part real quick. Okay, so as you can see, when the actual Dremel tool started making contact with the putter, there was almost no strain put on the motor whatsoever. It almost didn't change sounds at all. And that's because I was putting practically no pressure. Had I put any more pressure, you would hear that motor come under a little bit more of a load. But you're, you're with this much grit, you don't need to put any pressure practically at all. And that same applies to 600 or 800 grit. All right, so this is what the putter looks like when you're done with the grinding process. It can be cleaned up a little bit better than it is right now, but because I'm gonna sandblast it, I don't really need to. However, I did get a question from a lot of different people who asked, I don't have a sandblaster, I do have a grinder, what will the putter look like if I don't sandblast the putter? Well, this is kind of a general idea of what your putter's gonna look like. It's gonna look pretty raw and kind of a brushed finish and it won't be super, super even. If you put a lot more time into it, you can make it look better. But again, um, I would highly suggest getting a sandblaster if you do plan on doing a full refinish so that your putter has a nice consistent look when it's done. The second to the last step for me in the actual refinishing process is gonna be sandblasting. I'm using glass beads. These are the finest uh, grit that I could find. I bought these beads, I bought this like, Oh, probably three years ago and I don't remember exactly where I bought it from or what the grit was I'm gonna try to find it and put it in the link below all I do remember is when I was shopping for glass beads I was trying to find the finest grit possible because I wasn't trying to remove any material I was just simply trying to give it a nice satin finish look so if you're wondering what kind of uh, abrasive material I'm using in the sandblaster it is glass beads and it's I just I know for sure it's like really really fine grit if I can find the exact grit I will put it in the description below but I've been running off the same like 20 pound bag for like two years now so because this stuff seems to last forever for me but this is kind of it you get that nice satin finish and this is what you're looking at as a finished product I have done a lot of putters where people just want it to this point. They just want to get to the sandblast and then we do the paint fill and we're all done. On this particular putter, I decided that I was also going to do a powder coat. So I'm going to show you some pictures of the powder coat and that's the last step. I'm not actually going to show the powder coating process just because I've done that in a previous video where I think I covered that pretty concisely. But if you have any questions, just let me know. I'm also not going to show the paint fill, but I am going to do a tuxedo paint fill where all the paint fill is going to be white. So it's going to be a white on black finish there. I think it's going to look really good. And uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I really enjoyed making it for you. And I do have uh, plans to make additional videos in the near future. Hopefully I can do at least one video a month or two. Right now it's, it's a little bit tough because my internet is still lousy, but at least I have internet and so I can bring you guys some more content. So... For everyone who has subscribed and stayed subscribed for the last year, thank you so much. It means the world to me. If you haven't liked or subscribed to the videos yet, I hope that you will consider to do so. And I do plan to bring you guys uh, additional videos in the future. So I hope you guys are having a great week and we'll talk to you next time.